think of these bangs out of my eye. Hello everyone, it's me again, Chocolate Geisha, back again for another video, so thank you for tuning in. And I want to thank you all so much for a thousand subscribers! I know it doesn't seem like that much, but it's a milestone and I'm really grateful that I have you guys, so thank you. Now that that's out of the way, um, on to today's topic. So, today's topic is going to be teaching English in Japan. I mentioned in a previous video that I was going to make a video on this topic, and you know, I am a woman of my word, so here we are. All right, so stay tuned, and I'll give you guys some information on that. Oh, I forgot to mention, as you guys can see, I brought the bangs back by popular demand. They are growing on me. Um, maybe I'll put a picture like somewhere. I used to wear the front bangs so much in high school. It was like my signature look. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, back to the content. I've mentioned this fact before, but I am a teacher with JET, the Japanese Exchange and Teaching Program. But there are other ways to become an English teacher in Japan. There is Eon, there is Interact, there is like a ton of other smaller organizations as well and those will all basically get you to Japan. A lot of them provide visas as well, so you can get that too. Being an English teacher, you can teach all age ranges. You can teach from little kids, like um, like babies, like kindergarten, even before kindergarten, like preschool, like really itty bitty kids who can't even speak Japanese yet. Like you can teach that young. You can teach adults as well. You can teach business English or more advanced uh, grammar and vocabulary. A rule of thumb is that if you have a smaller agency, they tend to be based in bigger cities. But if you have a bigger agency, they're more likely to send you to smaller cities. With JET, it is a very large agency, so they have a lot of branches in a lot of places. There's a lot of locations that you could potentially go to. Another note for JET. JET places you in a school based on your level of Japanese. So if you've got really, really advanced Japanese, they'll put you where kids speak the least English. And if you speak only a little bit of Japanese, to no Japanese, because that's also a possibility too, if you speak very little Japanese to no Japanese, then they'll place you where the kids know a lot of English. So I put on my application that I was intermediate advanced, and they put me in an elementary school. But my friends, who don't speak very much Japanese, were put in middle schools and high schools. Just a note. I'm on a one-year contract, and most English teaching contracts tend to be set up that way, um, just for one year. Um, for JET, you can be here for up to five years, but I think if you have a smaller agency, um, you can work with them pretty much as long as you do your job well and they, they like you. I work from 8.30 to 4 p.m., so I've got, what is that, like eight? Is that eight hours? I don't wanna count, I'll put it like here or something. I work at an elementary school, so my experience is based on elementary schools, and we have first period, second period, a 20 minute break, third period, fourth period, a 45 minute lunch time, a 20 minute break after that, and then fifth period and sixth period. The school day goes from 8.50 to 3.30, so that's like the chunk of time that you'll see the kids. Elementary school is first grade to sixth grade. Then in middle schools, you have three years, first, second, third. And then in high school, you have three years as well. So there's first, second, third. So my school schedule tends to be all over the place. In any given day, I usually have three to four classes. Sometimes I have five classes, sometimes I only have two, so it really just depends on the day. I am in charge of anything English related. At my elementary school, we have an English board, which basically changes from month to month, and it's got a theme of, um, of Western culture. So if it's, uh, say for example, if it's July, maybe the English board will be 4th of July themed, or if it's October, it'll be Halloween themed. Basically, if there's anything related to English, I'm there. So for the sixth graders, there was a English boot camp 
that was all weekend long for like one weekend and the kids parents came in and it was just a bunch of extra English classes I was there as well if you end up getting placed in high schools maybe middle schools a lot of them have very advanced um, English activities like there could be an English club or um, there could be uh, there could also be like a speech contest as well. So let's talk about the teachers. There are so many different teaching styles. You have teachers who are very bubbly, you have teachers who are more like professional and reserved. They've got different personalities, they're different people. I've noticed that the students reflect this teacher and vice versa. If you've got a teacher who's really, uh, who's really animated, the students also tend to be very expressive and uh, in their happiness and other things. Um, if you have a teacher who's more like laid back, the students are also like quite laid back. Um, it's something interesting that I've noticed. It's definitely a trend. I've noticed a correlation between those. You're supposed to be teaching 50-50 with the English classes. You're not supposed to take up most of the time and you're not supposed to be standing on the sidelines while the teacher is there doing her thing or his thing. You guys should be engaged in a team teaching environment both of you teach equally, and with JET, the main teachers, which are called HRT, homeroom teacher, they are in charge of discipline as well. So if you've got a troubled student, or if you've got someone crying, or you've got someone bullying someone else, then they're in charge of that, and you're not supposed you're not supposed to say anything, especially if you don't consult the teacher first. Next, let's talk about the kids. I love the kids. Yo, the kids, I think, out of everything in the school, I love the kids the most. The kids are so chill, especially like, you'll get favorites too. Like, I have favorites. I, I'm not supposed to say that, but I do. Like, I have kids where you see them and you just know it's gonna be a good time. Maybe it's because I'm so childish, but I love the kids so much. Like, you know, when you look at the adults, you think, like, some of them seem really repressed, but just take the exact opposite of that and that's what the kids are like. Japanese people seem super polite. The kids are rude and they'll speak their mind. Adults are super like composed and like very stoic in the face. The kids are so expressive and goofy. The kids, they're so lovable and I just love them so much. I love my kids. I love my kids so much. You don't understand. Like I tend to repeat phrases in my videos but that's just because they're so true. Like kids are kids. Like. Kids, if you understand basic psychology, then you can understand a Japanese kid. Like, I look at the kids, there's so many different kinds of kids. Got like the teacher's pet, like the kid who always wants to raise his hand and always wants to contribute to class in some way. And you've got like, you know, the cool kid who's just kind of like off to the side. And he's not necessarily a bad kid, but he's just like too cool to act like he likes English, even though he does. Um, <laughs> I know you do, don't try to front on me. And then I've got like, I've got some gorgeous kids too, like kids who just like, looking like freaking, you know, June Yamamoto in the face. You know, I'm just like, wow, like, you're a, you're a handsome young boy. Like, you got some kids, like, I got this one girl, I didn't know her name for the longest time, but I was calling her Model Chan because she was just so pretty, I was like, Wow, like, who are your parents? Yeah, and then you got some goofballs. Like, like there's a couple kids, especially in my fifth grade, who really understand, like, the humor that I like. There was this one kid, right? He made this face. And you know, you're the teacher. You're the teacher, so you're not supposed to, like, act, like, shaken or shook about anything. Um, but he made this face. I was like, <clears throat> like, I chuckled. I chuckled accidentally, right? And for the whole rest of class, he was making that face. It was so funny. And I was just like, why are you doing this to me? I'm trying to teach you. I'd say elementary school is the most fun in terms of English. They play games, they sing songs, they dance around, we do like skits and plays. Um, it's really fun. It's really fun at this age. At this level, they're not concentrating on getting super fluent in English. It's just building a relationship. You make your lessons fun, the kids associate English with fun, and then hopefully it'll cultivate a desire for them to learn more throughout their lives since they're so young. Being a teacher is a lot of responsibility. There's a lot 
there's a lot on you to not only give them an education, but to support them as an adult. You're a support system for them. You know, there's a lot of like unrelated things that I do with kids. For example, I've got a lot of downtime compared to other teachers. Teachers have so many different responsibilities, like they're answering phone calls, they're faxing papers, to make sure that the school runs smoothly. And compared to a lot of the other teachers, I've got a lot of downtime. So, I'll go to the library and like read a book um, and sometimes there will be like a whole class that comes into the library because it's their library time, right? And I'll just basically like impromptu join their class. The librarian will be like, okay everyone, close your books and come over here and I'll read you a story. And all the kids will get up from their seats and go to read a story and I'll just go there and join them. They'll be sitting on the floor and I'll be sitting with them and we'll just listen to the story. And long story short, being a teacher is a lot of responsibility and I'm really enjoying it so far. Like, I am really liking being a teacher. Like, seeing the kids get better and better and better at English, it really, it, you, it's fulfilling. It feels it feels like you're genuinely making a difference in their lives. In my life as well, when I was their age, first starting to get that appreciation for Japanese and finally start to, to think, you know, like, I like this. I like this. I want to learn more. Like, seeing the same thing in them, seeing that same life, that same interest, that same passion in them, really, like, it, it tugs at my heartstrings a little bit because it, it feels so nostalgic and it feels like I'm really just continuing the cycle of, of learning and understanding. If you guys have any questions about JET or being a teacher, then leave them in the comments below and I will be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you like this video, then like it. And if you want to see more, then hit subscribe and become part of the YouTube fam. But thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next one. Bye.